Hello, welcome to the IGN UK podcast. And we were so good, this trio of people last week, that they stuck us on again. My name is Gav Murphy. To my right is... Alicia. And to my left is... Joe. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is good, isn't it? That's nice. <laughs> I love it. It's like the three musketeers, but instead of swords, we have sword-shaped mics. Who's yeah. our dog, Tanyan? Don't know. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. Got to think it through before you start throwing around musketeer references. Well, Dale. Because <laughs> Dale, oh, without, without Dale, none of this podcast oh, actually exists. Up. Dale's cheering in the soundproof so. booth that we confine him to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. What have everyone been doing this week? Actually, I was going to move the Overwatch party down, but we've all been up to that. Peek so. behind we the have. curtain. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to. We're going to go bang into it. Because that's what it is what we've been up to this week. On Monday, who has a launch? Launch party on a freaking Monday. Are you complaining Monday. about being no, I'm set not. to a launch no, party? No, I'm not. After, after the negative response to us talking about review scores last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't start. I, to oh. be fair, every day is good for a launch party, but yeah, I think quite a few of us went slightly overboard. Uh, oh well, yes, it was. It was um, more. Po- well, who was it? You, Joe, that you went to the pub before the mm, launch party, yeah. and then yeah, mm. yeah. I thought I was really clever because I had an interview with the, the game designer who was um, going to be at the party later on, and I, I booked the last slot of the day. I was like, I'm just going to finish this off and head to the party with the guy who's made the game. <laughs> Turns out there was like a two hour gap, and so I just went to a pub. Yeah. And, I ended up not well. Yeah, like <laughs> half past four, you sent a message to me going, what time are you going to finish? <laughs> I was like, well, I'll be finishing at half past five when I finish every day, Joe. Mm. Can you come to Leicester Square now? I'm Please, lonely. Let's go to Spoons. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, I did that thing where, you know, like when you, when you know you're going to be slightly late than what you said. I did that thing where I was like, kept saying how far away I was. And he's yeah. like, oh, I'll go to the bar. And I, in my head, I was like, oh, I kind of don't want him to go to the bar because by the time I get there, the pint's going to be slightly not Warm. as... Yeah. Luckily, I was also lying to you because uh, I was in a different pub. Were you? <laughs> and then I walked to that one. Holy it all bananas. comes out. All the lies tumbled yeah. together to create a good old night. But we went, <laughs> yeah, but up. We like Overwatch. I went to the launch party of it. Uh, in the W Hotel in Leicester Square, mm-hmm. um, drank some booze, and then went home to play it. Do you know what the highlight of that party was for me? What? Being taken home by your girlfriend because you were so drunk? Let's not talk about that. The, um, <laughs> my favorite, that was my highlight. My favourite was like the uh, sort of mime-like woman dressed up as Tracer. <gasps> so she weird. She was amazing. That was weird. She creeped me out. She didn't say a word. Yeah. I mean, Because clearly, clearly she was from like Birmingham or something, so she <laughs> yeah. can't pull off the Tracer voice. And then, so, so she was just walking around like... Quiet. Butting into conversations. And then just pointing, pointing her, her guns. guns at yeah. No, but she was brilliant. So she was a proper amazing amazing cosplayer that mm. had like and, and like I've no one seen Overwatch cosplay really yeah. because it's just come out and she had like Dale and I did a photo next to her and mm. we were like linked arms with her and like it was proper like plastic like metal she had like all it, it wasn't like fuzzy felt and velcro to be fair if she'd been a shit cosplayer at the Overwatch launch yeah, that would have been true. quite unpleasant well this is what I said to them everyone was going on about how awesome it was, was and they were like oh such a I can't believe that cosplayer was there I was like you didn't realize she was paid to be there, right? <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, stop being such a grumpy fucker. <laughs> no, that was actually Rob Crossley from GameSpot. <laughs> it's just him dressed up. Um, but, but talking of amazing things, tell the lovely people, Joe, about our incredible concept art for new characters. Oh, yeah. That was, well, so it turned out, we basically... I uh, went down like a sack of shit. <laughs> no, it was all right. It was all right. I haven't listened back to the interview yet because it's embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> but, God. So we, um, on the the other day, you might have seen the news uh, reported so well by me, um, that uh, a little girl had drawn her own Overwatch character and her dad sent it over Twitter to the uh, yeah. Overwatch Twitter account. And an Overwatch artist turned it into proper concept art for the game. And it's... Amazing. Just and the most really adorable lovely, yeah. story yeah, ever. Yeah, there's this lovely little video. The character looks exactly like something from Splatoon. I'm just saying she can't be there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so fresh. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, so when I went to see the game designer, uh, Gav made a good suggestion that we all draw our own Overwatch characters that I presented <laughs> them to him. And he was confused. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he just looked at it he, in abject horror. And, like, fair play to him. Um, Michael Chu, he's called. He... he came up with, like, actual good game design analysis. Because, I mean, it is his job. Yeah, um, that's and, what we wanted, though. And he was he was looking at them all, 
And basically, I think he thought all the designs were shit except Krupa's because Krupa can actually draw. Yeah. And well, so it was good. We should probably say what the designs were. Well, yours was a mushroom person that you didn't realise is a character in Battleborn. Battle I had no idea. I literally, I'd spent so that's like... That's not that we're taking a piss. Yeah. I, I actually had to say, look, Alicia's not played Battleborn. She didn't know. <laughs> this isn't a slight. <laughs> I'm sorry for what she's done. Yeah. Um, you drew a oh. double-dicked Welsh dragon that he called <laughs> Obvious. Yeah, he c- the man who designed, what is it, Soldier 76? <laughs> like, called my design Obvious. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I drew a man with a big French horn. Um that See, was really thought, good, actually. Like, I thought initially that the French horn was like entwined with his insides. That would have been much cooler. I'm not I, that imaginative. And I thought that's what you done. I was like, oh, that's badass, man. Because that's actually pretty creepy. That's something yeah. really that's like, like Lovecraft. Especially like, considering oh, he had a giant fist coming out. Yeah. Of Did you ever play? Um, oh no, it's Twisted Metal. Did you ever play that? Yeah. Where there's yeah. a guy who's like his arms are stuck in two big wheels. Yeah. And he's just the car. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> that's what I was going for. That's a little bit like Junkrat actually in Overwatch because he's Why? he turns into a wheel. No, he doesn't, no, he doesn't turn, turn into, into one. He's a got wheel. It on his back. No, he you're shit to overwatch. But he's inside it. No, he's not. What? He sets it off. Yeah. You can be killed. He has the he's big like that. like a speed boat mode, and he goes. Vroom. I thought he was inside it. No, no. Ah, oh, I thought he was inside it. Do you like him less now? Not really. I love it. That's my favorite character. <laughs> well, that makes sense actually, because as soon as it detonates, it jumps back to where you are. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was in here. That's why you've got to be hiding it. when you set it off, because otherwise people come see you. Do you know that wheel can go up walls? Like what? it because it's got it? spikes on it, it can climb. So there's oh, and it can wow. jump. There's an amazing I knew it could jump. There's an amazing video. <laughs> I knew it could jump. I knew it could um jump. there's an amazing video of like a player called, uh, using Farah, which is the lady with the jetpack. Yeah, yeah. And she's running away from it and she like jumps over this wall. So he climbs up and like jumps it off the lip of the wall, yeah. follows her through the air and detonates it in midair and takes her out. Yeah. It's incredible. That's badass. I got to play the game with him yesterday when we were playing at lunchtime and it was we were defending. I had th- there was three enemies. Like you know, whoever who teleports people. Oh, uh, Symmetra. Yeah. So someone had teleported like three people in, I think, mm. um, and they they teleported right there. So I chucked um, I chucked my mine as junk rat yeah. right in the middle of where they were teleporting into. Uh, but then I backed off uh, too far. It was like in the um, like the dojo level. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. I backed off too far, started falling, but detonated him just before I fell. <laughs> so even though I died straight away, it blew all three that's, of them up. See, that's nice. the best. Like, that, that mine is so much fun because it yeah. because you can jump with it and you can also push people with it. Yeah. I love just putting it next to an edge tempting someone to come in yeah. like they cut round a corner and you just blow them off the edge of the map You're yeah like, ah, fuck off I've, great. Been, I've been putting those traps um just outside where people like just n- ignoring what i'm meant to be doing with the rest of it that's right just, just go into where uh, other people spawn oh so, and just sticking the traps outside sticking the, door. the traps outside the door especially yeah. in the hollywood level like you get really stuck there because it's like there's only a couple of ways you can come out oh yeah they've got it's like the big man's chinese theater yeah, isn't it yeah, that they yeah. have to come out of um and so you can come out around the corner but the doorway is an actual doorway um, like the size of a normal door so if you put like traps in there like they always run straight into them yeah. or just put it right on the corner as well that's awesome. like that's really good see wow. i've never used any of the trap characters like oh, i'm yeah. not and this is the thing that i love about overwatch that we've actually played it a fair bit in the office mm. with, with like the beta version and stuff and everyone plays it in such different ways and there's so many different ways you can do it and so i've i've kind of focused on like i guess supports and tanks yeah. mm. those those two classes i know quite well but like it's just it's just really interesting how everyone kind of has their own. Well, that's it. I yeah. played as Zenyatta for the first time last night. I like I don't didn't use supports because I'm selfish. Yeah. And then like I used him and was like, this is amazing. Really? Like, yeah. As soon as you get the hang of like you're helping people kill other people and helping them stay alive. Yeah. Your mm. whole like because you see like, what can they what can he do? He so he can throw orbs, orbs of discord, yeah. um, which me mean people take more damage right and he can throw orbs of harmony which heal people slowly as they're mm. on them mm. and so and they like i didn't realize supports see the map differently yeah, as well they like do. they can see all the team yeah. through walls so you can run to people really? and they're like color coded so like they get steadily more red their little outlines as mm. they start to die so and then it gets like a like, critical thing that. if they're like close right. to close to death so yeah. you can then yeah. go like i'm gonna go to him throw yeah. an orb of harmony and also Zenya yeah, is just crazy powerful as soon as you orb of discord someone you start just throwing stuff at them with his attack and they just die he's great that's like, wicked it's well good yeah, um, I like that. so yeah now like my whole outlook on the game's changed because i'm like oh well now i actually want to help people because it's fun yeah dale likes to do that character 
damage, though. Yeah, so. I'm not gonna, that's fine. You can do that. But then you can go the same character. Yeah, but like, two supports a bit dangerous. Well, it? no. Yeah. Well, so we yesterday we played, and I was Mercy, and he was the Nyata. Yeah. And it was when we were we were trying to like defend an area, and like three tanks, enemy tanks came in, yeah. and it was literally just two supports and. Who was the third character? I think it might have been Tracer. So by all rights, we should have died. Yeah. But because I could heal and Dale could heal, yeah. we kind of like, we kept healing each other while one person was healing Tracer. That and so like smart. Tracer just took out like nice. the three tanks because she never died. Mm. And like, it was great. So it is actually quite powerful. It means that you have, rather than having one character, you almost have like six. Yeah. 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 Well, if anyone's learned anything, it's that we like Overwatch. Yeah. <laughs> we really do. We really People do. are going to be so bored of us talking about this yeah. game. But I I'm was, never stopping. It was like I was saying to you earlier, though, Joe. Like. I, I, if people are bored of this game already, I think they're a little bit screwed because it's. I yeah. think it's going to be the next esports game, like the next massive esports mm. sensation. I think people will be talking about this game for bloody ages. Yeah. So, I'm, like, I'm already excited about new characters. Like, not because I'm bored of the old ones, but because I want to see how it changes how everyone's yeah. playing all yeah. the time. Like, watching people counter each other and use different characters to take out other ones is like. It's so interesting. Like yeah. just playing that game and watching how it changes mid match yeah. is impressive. Well, like like I absolutely love playing Overwatch, but I'm really excited to watch people play it. I'm mm. really excited to see how you know because normally when you watch esports in Call of Duty or whatever, it's kind of like there's there's an element of tactics and you see people how they kind of run through the map and I love watching Call of Duty. You know, it's, it's yeah. interesting, but I think that Overwatch is going to be so much more fascinating yeah. because you've suddenly got well, how you know what what characters are the team going to choose? How are they going to work together? You know, are they going to use the support to do xyz like what you know what it changes so much because mm. the gameplay is so much more complicated in terms of teamwork yeah compared to any other esport that we've got yeah. oh, there we are it's gonna be good that's overwatch this week also i think we should declare war <laughs> on, <laughs> on the us of a okay okay cool you heard it here what is for a laugh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. What? Let me take you back to Monday morning. I'm back. Are you there? That was yesterday. Uh, I, no, two days ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what you meant to do yesterday. What happened yesterday? <laughs> um, so Monday, Monday morning, I got up particularly early because I thought I had a lot of stuff to do in work and I thought I might go to the gym before work as well. Got really early on the train into work. Uh, so I just went on Twitter and literally every stupid American that I follow was just losing their minds about Game of Thrones. Oh, no. Now, I watch Game of Thrones with my girlfriend, who I only see on weekends. So, which means we are, I'm constantly six days away from watching. I'm six days behind everyone else, basically, oh, on Game of constant Thrones. Constant terror. And obviously, we work online, we work at IGN. But I just think this week, for yeah. some reason, there were so many idiots that I f did follow, don't follow anymore. <laughs> um, but actually, no, I've kept following quite a lot of them because I've taken down their names because they were just, just saying things, not adding to the conversation about Game of Thrones. I still haven't seen this episode of Game of Thrones, so I'm not gonna go into spoilers mm. just in case somebody else hasn't. Also, I haven't seen it, so I'm piecing together in my mind what people have said. But I got so much stuff spoiled for me, but yeah. like in images, in tweets, in tweets that was literally just like, what the fuck, then something happened, this thing that happened, or yeah. a big thing that happened for me. And I was just like, you're adding nothing to the conversation other than saying, I've seen this, look at yeah. me, love me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it does my head in, man. It's really strange how like this is emerging because like yesterday yeah. we were having to have like full on strategy talks yeah. about how to write news stories, yeah. what images to put like on yeah, thumbnails yeah, yeah. and stuff. And like, I'm glad we are because the US guys we were we don't <laughs> fucking seem to be doing it. <laughs> Fuck it up. But, um, like, I just saw so much stuff, and it was just like, I think we even run a story that was like, the what does the big this big reveal mean for Game of Thrones? And it was a picture of it. Yeah. And it was I just know. like, from that, I can yeah. piece together what it is. And I was just like, I was just fuming. It was and when we, we did a news story straight after, because I watched yeah. it on my lunch break here, okay. and I'm so glad I did, because yeah, it yeah. definitely got spoiled. I was sat on the underground on my way home on Monday, and yeah. two guys were talking about it, and I That's was like, thank God, thank God we watched it. Mm. But, but, but it's... But, 
it's hard because I know you watch, you, you know, the, the cool thing about the internet is something cool happens and then yeah. you can talk about it with people, yeah. which is awesome, which is why forums were always brilliant. That's why I was like a little forum rat growing up. Because <laughs> yeah. it was just like, I would watch something and then I would go into a forum to talk about it. Yeah. But that forum is closed, whereas Twitter is, is an open forum yeah. and it's public it and is, everyone can see it. And now you have tough. spoiler hashtags. Yeah. yeah. Now, well, maybe that's what they need. Maybe that, you know, like how NeoGAF, if you go on there, they've got yeah. a thing where you can black out text and then if you hover over it, yeah. it reveals what it says underneath. Even NeoGAF is more. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they need for Twitter. They need special spoiler boxes. That's the thing. I, you know, you know, like some... Meverse does that. Okay, yeah, Nintendo's <laughs> social network. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it does my head in, but at the same time, like, I kind of see both sides of it. Uh, but, you know, what's... I don't know, like, I saw someone, and also, if... I, I had a tweet off someone, because I, I did a couple of, like, jokey tweets. Because just, I, wait, you just looked into the camera like you were about to, like... Address, address this guy. someone you dislike. No, I was just about to say, like, the people who go, Ah, it's not a spoiler, because it's all in the books. Fuck you. <laughs> That's <laughs> an idiotic thing to say. It's also not, not true at this point. Also it's not, also not I mean, true now. We yeah. also, we do know, we do know that George R. R. Martin actually had quite a heavy hand in yeah. this episode. But the point is the book hasn't actually been yeah, exactly. written yet. So every, it yeah. was a massive spoiler for everyone. But yeah, that, that's the thing. But at the same time, like um, somebody else tweeted and I was like, I kind of, that is a good argument to it. It's like, why is talking about Game of Thrones as it's happening considered spoiler? Talking about sports, mm. talking about a, a football match, say, if you're tweeting along with a football match or like wrestling or something like that, why is that not considered spoiler? But Game of Thrones is. Well, and actually, I was like, that's a pretty good point. I think that is a good point. Firstly, I think a live aspect is a big deal. Yeah. Like, if, it is, if it's an event happening... I know, obviously, Game of Thrones, watching it is an event. Yeah. But because it's not, like, one time <laughs> only at this moment... Right, okay. I think it makes a difference. Although, I do know people who've gone absolutely crazy about having football scores ruined for them. So, yeah. like, it's not as if people don't believe in But that's the thing, with, with sport, when I do it, um, if, I, if there's a game that I want to see myself and mm. not see it, I actually won't use my phone. Mm. Like, yeah. I, I've switched off my phone until I've been able to Why do it. Why aren't you doing that with Game of Thrones, then? Because he's got to switch it off for a week. For six days. Well, that's fair, yeah. <laughs> I do like getting in touch with you as well. I like having Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's, it, I don't think there's an answer yet. No. Unfortunately. Spoiler boxes, Twitter, Be done. Because I, I like the idea that people can talk, go on the internet and talk about a thing that they like. That's why That's why we're here. Mm. That's literally why we've got jobs. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Circle well done, IGN. <laughs> they hit on a niche. But there we are anyway. But something nicer. Um, and I don't think there's any spoilers in this. Um, there's a guy called James Young. Do you know mm. who this is? Oh, uh, yes, I do, because okay. he was here. <laughs> I'll tell you. James Young won a competition that Konami set up um, to promote Metal Gear Solid V. Um, and obviously, in that, your character has a robotic arm mm. um, because he'd lost an arm. So he, you spend the, like, the game like sort of upgrading it and stuff like that. So they launched a competition to promote their game. Now, whatever you think of that. As a, as a PR thing, a PR stunt, fine. But they launched a sort of competition to find an amputee uh, who needs an arm, and they were just going to give him an arm. They're going to make him an arm. That's so cool. Make him a cool robot arm. And this guy called James Young, who's a British guy, um, won the competition. Mm. Uh, and he? he got to design the arm properly. Like, it's so cool as well. Yeah, but like, he is a bioscientist as well. I like, think so, he's yeah, fully, yeah. he's into it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he okay. knows what he's doing. This makes more sense, because I was picturing, like, our Overwatch concept art designs. <laughs> 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 so, don't be fair, though. Like, so James is a big video games fan. He's also a big sci-fi nerd as mm. well. So what he did was he designed it to look... Like really sort of Blade Runnery, um, yeah. like, and he also not even he went even a step further and came up with a fake company. I think it's Aladine um, Industries. Uh, he he's just, branded his own he's arm. Branded his own arm. Come up with this like whole backstory <laughs> for Al Aladine Industries and stuff like that. Strange thing about this, right? Yeah, this is for Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why didn't he just get Snake's arm? I don't know. Hey, maybe the robot he just wanted to be original. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't practical. Maybe it wasn't good enough. Maybe it wasn't Maybe good enough. Big for him. Slap in the face well, to Konami. Yeah, so his his arm is like it's got to be like put on like this big. Yeah. It's it's an entire arm. It's not just sort of like the forearm and the hand and mm. the hand sort of thing. 
But um, yeah, he's so a, what does his arm do? How did he design it? Missiles, no. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he designed it with um, this person who designs things like that, and it took him like months to do it. But he had a proper input on it. It wasn't like they were like, "Yeah, oh, it's your arm. You want a competition? Off you go." Mm. Sort of thing. And he's got this. He's got like he can change those different stuff. Like he can change the lights yeah, on it. Yeah, it's modular, isn't it? Because yeah. I saw him the other day saying he'd three D printed like a USB powered yeah. GoPro slot for yeah. his arm. What? You're like. Well, now it's just better than human arms. Yeah. Like, he, um, now we're all cutting off yeah, our own arms, isn't it? So basically, there's this one panel on there. Um, there's this one panel on it that uh, is called the social panel. <laughs> Um, and because he cause, the Aladdin social panel because the idea is that people can sort of send in ideas and stuff so one idea he told me about was like um, it's basically for a, he didn't say what game it was but it's a game that he collects that has miniatures okay. and it's basically like it's, he's designed it so there's a little shelf in it and he can put the miniatures like in it a there. display case that's pretty cool so he's got a display what? case on. he's also designed a thing so he can launch a drone from it so he can walk around with this drone stuck to him and then do 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 launch it this holy drone. shit I know wow it's amazing right you're going to have to explain because you met him the the other day, right? I did, yeah. Right, so explain to me how it moves around. Like, this is a fundamental misunderstanding. I don't understand how, like, working prosthetics work. Like, yeah, what is it do? Point. What is it doing to make his arm move around? What I'll do, even better than try and bodge this explanation, mm. is I'm going to stick right now with the podcast a little bit of him explaining how the arm works. It's kind of held on by a big old harness because I don't have much arm, so really hard to get stuff to kind of hold on. A lot of, a lot of technology for, for arms is based on hands and really like slim sockets where you can put your arm in and it kind of stays on the electrodes as well, just touch around your forearm, which is a really, really good way to, to use it. It's a really utile way of having this technology, but for me, it's like, gotta have this big harness. There's five electrodes on my shoulder. Um, they are EMG electrodes. They basically pick up the signals of my muscles tensing on my shoulders. So when I tense them, it sends the signal to these like receivers and, and translates it into digital signal that travels down to the hand through the arm. And that activates the grip patterns and it allows me to open and close the hand and change the position of the fingers. It's carbon fiber, which is from a company called GTR, Global Technologies Racing, and they make really cool stuff. And they do Formula One and military and things, so it's really weird to get them on this project. And we've got the social panel up here. It's also got some a little magnet hub, which I can mount the drone on. Uh, with an attachment. It's basically supposed to be kind of like a buddy for the arm technology. In the same way that Snake goes into the environment and he has like D-Walk or D-Dog or Quiet or whoever's coming along. So we've created this drone uh, as a buddy and it's basically called, I don't, I feel embarrassed to say it, but I found a really cool word in Icelandic. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's, it's like fast, havas vidri. I think it means, win, it means windstorm because it's just like, a really noisy drone <laughs> so it's like a little it's a little buddy for me to have in the environment and it's got a it's got an fpv camera built in so i've got some matching goggles that allow me to see through the eyes of the drone and fly it around which is really cool and the custom controller that has been customized and painted to match the arm as well then we've got some logos we've got the connector that carries some of the power and the signals from the emg electrodes down to the hand. There is the big old lithium high voltage battery and there's a motor that drives uh, a servo. Uh, there's a servo that unlocks and locks the elbow so I can take the arm into different positions. And so the button panel and it's got a light in the hand so you can see it's like a torch for there's a laser also for whatever which is kind of like just a kind of just for adding alternative functions to expand on greater than human abilities in a way, yeah. by just including other tech in arms. There's just so many features, <laughs> I'm keeping on going. This is a, a pebble watch that we've chopped up essentially, so that the smartwatch fits in this magnetic area here. And there's a cable that uh, is to charge, charge the pebble watch as it's connected. And it's just really cool. We've got some carbon fiber plating over the outside just to add some even more customization. There you go. He did a much better job than I did. I learned so much. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, but yeah, he's a really interesting dude. He's also um, the subject of a BBC documentary as well on BBC Three, which you can check out on the BBC Three site. Uh, he's also got a GoFundMe page. He's trying to sort of make the arm better and mm. make his sort of life better. And you can go have a look at that if you want. And there's loads of information about James on GoFundMe.com. The most in- forward slash Titanium James. I apologise. Yeah. Uh, the most interesting thing about this, um, I, I went and visited uh, the people making the new Deus Ex game last year, and they were okay. chatting. I talked to the art designer about like. Because they've had like a fundamental change in how they display that world. Yeah. Um, but the most interesting thing chatting to him it was him talking about like the fashion of prosthetics and yeah. how like people using these like bionic limbs can think like James can think about what they want to look like. Yeah. Mm. Like we're now modifying like we're creating fashion statements as Absolutely, limbs. Absolutely. Yeah. But it, which is also incredible. Like, he it's changed such the an interesting um, thing. he changed the lights on his arm for the day that he came in uh, to talk to me like yeah. to the IGN red oh. color. Um, what stuff a like babe. that, which is really cool. It's such, oh. a, it's such an interesting thing. What? Like when yeah. we're like, you know, it's like you've got your tattoos. It's essentially yeah. like a, a step from that, isn't it? Yeah. Like where you're going, like I'm changing what I am. Yeah. As a fashion, like well, that's cool. I mean, I, I, sorry. It's, it's this idea of body modification, mm. just in general, and kind of a how we talk about wearable technology, mm. and you know, we've been looking at smartwatches and stuff. But the the key reason smartwatches haven't taken off is because they're not really that fashionable. Yeah. I mean, they're getting better, mm. but like any type of wearable technology, whether it's something that you just strap on or it's something that you're wearing more yeah. permanently, is you know, a prosthetic arm. It's got to have that kind of cool. What what what, what would you guys do if you could design that's the your thing, own though, like, prosthetic arm? That's why I haven't bought. Like I've got a Microsoft band, but I hate it because I, I like it for training and stuff like that. But it just it doesn't look very nice. Mm. Like it looks. I think the the thing that I don't like about um, sort of smartwatches is instead of trying to make them look like really lovely watches, they're making them look like basically robots on your wrist. Well, they're like little. Yeah, like the the Apple like Watch that. is. Just like a tiny iPhone. Yeah, I like, don't understand why that. Wear my iPhone. I don't understand why that's good. I don't think like it's not pleasing to look at. I looked at someone on the train yesterday, and they had an. And I was like, I don't. You can't say that you like that. What it like, needs is a series like of lights in it that you can light up in IGN colors. <laughs> in IGN colors, good stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. What would you do like for it? a limb? What would you have? Go out on a limb. Tell us. Nice. Bye. It's got to be eyes. Eyes. Yeah. Really? What? I'd have like some. Eyes that I could just see stuff. Fire lasers from. Just see stuff. No, from. no, not see stuff. But like, I'd be walking down. There's like augmented reality stuff going on. Okay. The first time I ever saw like an augmented reality like sort of concept video is basically you walking down the street and adverts. Obviously, is quite quite a big part of it. But it'll be like you like you pass a Sainsbury's and be like, Whoosh, remember you need milk, and you're like, oh shit, I gotta get some milk. Like, I think that's awesome. There, there's a bit in at the start of the new Mirror's Edge Catalyst where you okay. see through the eyes of the people who have all those. Okay. And they've just got like fucking pop up adverts everywhere, and uh, it sounds see? horrible. Well, that's that's what well, if you like, get hacked. That's not a good thing. But then I also just like the idea of um, if, if you can do this on your phone as well. But I've got an app that a, a bunch of my buddies in London are on, mm. and it's like. I think it's called Swarm. I've, I, I've used it very like sparsely, but it's like basically it says like, "Oh, uh, Joe's having a beer over here." You're right, and I you am. Can, and you can be like, "Oh, cool! I'll just go like join him." Like, what? So it's just a way of like barging in on your friends' good times. They're on a date, and you're like, <laughs> "No, I maybe." Hey! Uh, Lads, 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 lads. I'd, I'd probably text you first and be like, but like so many times I've come into the office and like been like, oh, realized I was just the exact same place that Rory was uh, on the okay, weekend yeah. and things like that. And be like, I was like, what were you up to? And he was like, I was just walking around, I was a bit bored. I was like, oh man, so was I. <laughs> like we could have been like- You both having lonely walks at weekends. Could have been getting wrecked. Oh, right. I, like, I like walking around London, but like I like walking around London and then being like, oh, Joe's over here. Okay, sweet, I'll walk to Joe. Uh, yeah, you can do that's that. what I do with my eyes. I'm not getting on Swarm. You're not coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's on Swarm. I think that's a problem with the app. <laughs> um, what would you get? I think I would get like two massive bionic wings, okay. like a pair of wings, because it'd be really cool because you could just get everywhere really quickly. And imagine flying over London. Like yeah. that would be You're really, really cool. You're getting shot down. Um, that's happening straight away. Yeah, by James's, it's by it's James's it's uh, it's drone. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. In which case, I can just use them as a really nice umbrella. Because right. if you're walking along and you just unfold your wings and it's pouring with rain, you just go, whoop, 
Yeah. And you know, and you could have Umbrella. little, you could have little lights in them. You could have a speaker. So system. so far, we've got eyes, so it reminds you to get milk and wings that you can use an umbrella. Yeah, yeah. Joseph, I'm going to replace the top part of my skull okay. with a sort of like a, a stand for a billboard, and then get paid to advertise things. <laughs> Adverts, <laughs> yeah. brilliant. There we go. <laughs> Hopefully, someone's learned some stuff from that. <laughs> the humans can't be trusted. <laughs> right. So. One of my worst things on the internet is um, parody accounts okay. on Twitter. Yes. So the Bill Murray one. The Bill Murray one. Fuck the Bill Murray Twitter like, account. You've got a lot against Twitter, haven't you? This is I just love this Twitter. whole episode has turned it's into this is the problem. The more you like house. something, the more you can hate bits of it. Oh, yeah. Very true. But like, yeah. So like my mother. But what? But, <laughs> <laughs> but with the parody accounts, I just don't get them. So the Bill Murray parody account. It, it's not even, it's like, I don't know what it exists for. Oh, it's so stupid. There's a Will Ferrell one as well. Yeah, there where is. It's like, it's not speaking in their voice. No. It's just using their face to tell shit jokes yeah. and get retweets for it. It's I really weird. I really don't get it, right? But, but, this, this is not, this bit of the podcast is not a rant about that. It's to tell you about a corner of the internet that I found. And it's an unofficial Ooh. Sonia Jackson from EastEnders Instagram account. Right. It's amazing. It's called Sonia Official. Remind so, me who Sonia so, is. Wait, it's called Sonia Official, but and it's, it's not an actual well, I'm, official I'm account. I'm guessing it's not official. Remind me who Sonia is. So Sonia Jackson is uh, her from EastEnders, remember? I, oh, I know I her do face. Not, I do not know this face. Oh, wait, I do know yeah, this yeah, face. Do, yeah. She's been in adverts on that. Has she? Well, I don't know. For EastEnders, probably. But it's it's just do, madness. Do, do, At, what is it? Do, oh, do, so do, funny. Is it just pictures of her? Uh, some are pictures, a lot of this Photoshop stuff. Um, but she's, also, she's basically got, like, running hashtags. Um, I'll show you in a second now, but yeah. She's basically got running hashtag jokes, um, which is just... Uh, she says, says she wants to keep everything gorgy because, <laughs> like, that's like gorgeous. Yeah. But then I'll show you, like, gorgy. Some, but then she's also got this one hashtag just doing this now. And right. I was like, I think that's meant to be like, oh, I'm just doing this in this account now because people are like, why are you only doing this now? But my favorite hashtag that she puts on everything, and I'm going to start putting on my photos actually, is. You know the... <laughs> You're already laughing. <laughs> you know the Kelly Clarkson song yeah. that goes, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Yes. Yeah. Her hashtag is, what doesn't kill you makes you Sonia. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Did you just take that reference as... A Kelly Clarkson song because that's definitely just a general phrase that Kelly yeah. Clarkson oh, yeah, put but, into but a song. It's basically then, the reason for that is because she do, like whoever does this account does like parody songs where it's Kelly Clarkson going, "What well, doesn't kill you make you?" And then it cuts to someone going, "Sonia," yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just doesn't work. But like she put up one the other day, which was Eurovision, and it's a picture of anyone who's in America is probably not getting a lot out of this bit. But she put up a picture of her. Um, Kerry Katona, Gail Platt from Coronation <laughs> Street, and Shirley Carter from EastEnders. It says, me and my gorgy girls, Kerry, Gail, and Shirley, are ready for the Euroviz Hun Sun contest. Are you? We are bringing the sass, sexiness, trash, and of course, keeping it gorgy. Hashtag Eurovision 2016. Hashtag what doesn't kill you makes you Sonia. <laughs> Let me see the picture. Hashtag Shirley Carter. What is going on? <laughs> Who's got time for this? Oh my gosh. I've got a lot Who's of time, the time for this. to Photoshop no. all this? I wish what, this was me. What tangible benefit is this to anyone? Don't know. What are they doing? This right now. Who's running this? <laughs> I honestly don't know. But some of it is this like. This kind of thing freaks me out. Some of it's so badly Photoshopped. Like, it's a uh, picture is of her. Is that person naked? That's, picture, that's her as all three members of Destiny Child. <laughs> <laughs> have you my favourite um, inexplicable Instagram account? Have you ever seen Drake twins? No. no, it's fascinating, right? So someone just takes pictures of Drake, yeah, and then photoshops painstakingly photoshops another Drake into them Why? and pretends that they're twins. <laughs> Look it up now. It is incredible. Like because not only the photoshops are incredible, but he, right. it's not. He'll take like. So paparazzi pictures of him, right? But you know they take multiple pictures, so he'll of take course, yeah, like yeah, yeah. another one from that set where oh. the lighting's exactly the same, so it looks perfect, <laughs> and sticks him next to him. So it's like him at basketball games with his Drake twin and That's stuff. That's awesome. It's so weird. You've uh, like 
That's so bonkers. It's crazy. And he, like, puts them in different clothes. And <laughs> it's fascinating and mind-blowing. And I don't, I, love know, it. I don't know why anyone does this. I love 45,000 followers. Gav has literally just clicked follow Good. on it's that account. I don't... But I just... Where did the idea come from? Why were they? Why are they doing it? Why is it still going on? What yeah. is happening in the world? But this, that's, <laughs> that's the. I like the efforts gone in. Even on Sonya official, like they're obviously not very good at Photoshop, but that mm. kind of adds to it because it is a bit duff in there. I do. I, I'm into the solid personality though. That's what annoys yeah. me about those Bill, that like that Bill Murray Twitter account. Yeah. there's no personality to it. No, they're not exactly, making yeah. a joke. They're just no. using it. It's mad. It's mad. Just squatting. Now this one, like she's created, she basically is lying and saying that she goes out with Zayn, who you see in one direction. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of pictures like, oh, me and my gorgy boy and gorgy stuff boy. like that. But gorgy, like, keeping it gorgy is so good. Um, but that's what I like anyway. That was an unexpected and excellent detail. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Jackson's Instagram. That's what people come to the IGN UK podcast for. Christ. Um, there'll be different people on next week, so it'll might be different. <laughs> uh, it's time for the game everyone is talking about. Yes! It's Keyword Countdown. Yeah! Pie in face. Loss of brother. Cleavage. Leg blown off. Title spoken by character. Keyword Countdown. Oh, you actually got a jingle. That was a jingle you just heard. And that was from Simon Cardi. Um, who made an amazing jingle? It's quite what serious. Is? I think it is it. Either, that's either Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or like Weakest Link or something like that. It's like, yeah, it's something it can, like that. I, but the thing is, it might be so generic that it's not actually from either, and he's yeah. like just done an incredible job of yeah. creating theme tune Definitely. noises. So I, also, I had loads of people email and tweet me saying, "Stop calling that Who song." <laughs> Teenage Wasteland. Teenage Wasteland. <laughs> it's Baba O'Reilly. Which That's a much worse name. Though. It's terrible. Do they, do they, do they cool. say Baba O'Reilly in the lyrics? Oh, that's a really of long song. song. I can't uh, be bothered with it. I don't, I, I don't know. But lots Maybe of, you meant to go Ba Ba O'Reilly. No, no. I don't think so. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was a good. But that's not the only jingle we got sent in. We got bloody four. loads. We got four. So does this include the one that someone sent us like five weeks ago and we totally missed? No, I think it, isn't that the mad one? Oh, maybe. <laughs> I think like a guy sent it said I sent you this five weeks ago and you didn't you ignored us. Oh really? And then we listened to it and we're like. Yeah, maybe maybe that's why. <laughs> no, it's good. We'll just play no, that it's now. It's, it's from Dave Uppercut, and this is the mad one. Keyword countdown. Keyword countdown. Keyword countdown. Absolutely mad. Yeah, so, but, <laughs> but we, so we got two on the theme of Baba O'Reilly, yeah. which is what mm -hmm. I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep one for the end of uh, this mm. section so you can listen to that. But this is from Matthew Verstraten, who's kind of done like a metal riff, Baba O'Reilly, which I love. Um, so we'll get, then we'll play this and we'll go into the game. Then you can hear Dean Muscat's one, mm. which is fantastic. Muscat. Keyword countdown. So many keyword countdown, keyword countdown, oh yeah, so many keyword countdown. There we go. So are you ready for Keyword Countdown? I'm so ready. All this, all these songs just get us in the mood. Matthew Verstraten has pumped me right up. Yeah. I'm like a balloon. So, for those <laughs> of you oh not in the know, um, you probably didn't know any what was going on just then. Um, but Keyword Countdown basically is a game that I invented, yes I did, mm -hmm. um, on imdb.com. Some people invent penicillin, yeah. you invent Keyword Countdown. Exactly. And both Absolutely change fine. the world I'm and make it better. I'm allergic to penicillin. Bam! Yes! yes. But I'm not allergic to Keyword Countdown. <laughs> <laughs> it's Keyword Countdown, IMDb has some crazy keywords for all their films uh, to, to describe them. Can you guess the film from the keywords alone? Film number one. Oh God, oh, I'm actually not ready, hold on. <laughs> Okay. Film number one, scam, stock market, uh, uh, the big short, poverty, uh, wager, 
the pursuit of happiness. Sexual humour. Trading <gasps> places. Yes. Yes. What's trading places? Holy shit, Eddie Joe. Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. And stop giving films I've never seen. <laughs> it's a really good film. <laughs> How did you get that? Scams and uh, Wall Street and that. Wow. Um, the it's other... Anthony Mackie's favourite film. Apparently. Is it? Falcon guy. Well done. I listen to the Nerdist podcast. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the other clues, African-American protagonist, mm. 1980s, mm-hmm. role reversal, Prince and the Pauper, body swap. Prince and, and the, the Pauper. pauper. Yeah, it's essentially that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well done, Joe. Thanks, well mate. Done. Five well points done. to you. Uh, also, we should point out Joe's massively at the top of the league as well. It's amazing. Um, After my first outing where I got six points out of five yeah. at questions, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, all yeah. over this now. Um, so, yeah, you're at the top of the league. Uh, after just what are they, three goals? Is this, is this your third this, play? This is my fourth. This is fourth. This is fourth. Yeah. This is fourth. Okay. Yeah. okay, here we go. Film number two Loss of Innocence, Swearing, Loss of Mother, Paranormal Activity, Violence. Oh my god. Oh, The Babadook? Teenage Girl, <laughs> Rosemary's Baby, Church, Carrie, The Ring, Speaking in Tongues. Speaking in tongues. Oh, 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 oh! The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Rose. No, that's what I was going to say. It's not but that. Fine. Um, Fuck. Innocence. Yeah, speak it. Oh, oh, The Exorcist. Oh, guys. The Exorcist. Fuck. That was so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard you swear. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> Sorry. Just, just, beep, just beep that one, because it sounds worse. <laughs> we swear a lot. It sounds worse when you do it. It is actually I'm... the first time I've sworn in the IGN office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stressed. Oh, I wanted you to get that so much then. <laughs> the other one's priest exorcism. So close. So, so close. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Field number three. I can't believe we went for the exorcism of Emily Rose, Rose before, before the exorcist. exorcist. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? What is wrong with us? <laughs> okay. Racism, ghetto, fellow traveller. Fellow traveller? Talmud. What's Talmud? Diamond. Diamond. Gold Blood tooth. Diamonds. Gold tooth. Gold tooth. <gasps> Factory. Oh, it's Schindler's List? Yes. Don't swear again. Ah, <laughs> uh, well this, this is a good video podcast now. <laughs> Those are some wild movements. <laughs> On the audio version, that's just going to sound like swooshing and creaking. Just wind. But in life, that was a terrifying thing. It was fury. Mm. Raw, unbridled well fury. The other clues. Oh, my God. Mass grave. Concentration camp. Holocaust. In fairness, I've think. seen none of these films. Have you? You've never seen none of them. List. No, and at university, in halls, we had a lift that <laughs> was made Schindler. by Schindler. 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 Yeah. And everyone yeah, always same. used to go, hey, Schindler's lift, and I'd like laugh along and never yeah, have Maybe I'll watch that film. film one day. It is, it is fun to make light of Schindler's list in a yeah. lift, isn't it? <sighs> do you know what? It was really hard to do Schindler's list because... Why'd you do it? I'll tell you at the end. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, it was really hard to do without giving her away. And I thought Talmud would have given her away. What, what is a Talmud? Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. Something Jewish. Okay. It is. <laughs> I knew that. But. Um, there we go. Okay, here we go. Film number four. Really Keyword want, countdown. I just, want it. I just want it so bad. Prime Minister. Oh, oh, the Iron Lady! In the loop. Rockstar. Rockstar. Housekeeper. Oh, do a button! Oh. Oh, what's the one? Love Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had it. Two I swear words. It. Two swear words. I knew that. I knew that. And I had the image of him dancing. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I don't know. I've created a monster. We might, we might have to stop this game. <laughs> I think it's the theme tunes that got us all riled up. Yeah. I they Babaro riled us up. <laughs> oh, well done. Uh, the other the other clues after housekeeper, <laughs> U.S. president, dominatrix, transvestite, eel, eel, bare uh... breasts, talking during sex, love, bare breasts. <laughs> okay, got to stop this, Alicia. <laughs> Actual horror and anger on you. I sit next to you I at know. the desk. That's it. <laughs> Overwatch is going to be it. tense this afternoon. <laughs> So far, Joe's got 20 points. Bam! Oh. A minute. Film number five. Okay. Keyword counter. Okay. <laughs> Billionaire. 
Terrorist. Air Force One. Fucking Con Air. Presumed dead. The film Air Force One. Pirate Broadcasting. Pirate Broadcasting. Oh. Bodyguard. What's Olympus Die Fallen. Hard? Grauman's Chinese Theatre. What? Scene after end credits. What? Oh, Marvel? Yeah. Marvel. <laughs> I was like, something Marvel related. <laughs> the other clues. I can't believe- uh, that was the Chinese theatre that got, got got me. That that's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, the other the other the other clues sequel Iron Man suit. <laughs> <laughs> that's tw- a massive twenty three points for Joe. Joe, do not lose heart, Lisa. This is a hard game. It's, fine. it's a hard it's game. Fine. I'm, a, oh, I'm annoyed. I didn't get the last two because I'd seen them. I'd seen them. For an for a point, can you tell me the link between all those films? Can you run through all the films again? Uh, yes, <laughs> I should be able to. Trading Places, The Exorcist, Schindler's List. Um, what's that? Oh, Love Actually, and Iron Man Three. Someone are vomits they, in all of them. Are they all like rags to riches style stories? No, no. It's close. What's the Exorcist? No, oh, yeah. <laughs> The other way. She was, she just was rich. A young girl. Now she's, now she's Pazuzu. <laughs> <laughs> that is the name of the devil in that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Pazuzu. Uh, Pazuzu. So is that what they call it? The yeah. demon, yeah. That's the demon. Cool. Pazuzu. It also turns up in uh, Futurama as well. But oh, yeah. anyway. um, the link was this is episode 333. Every one of those films were, it was the top film in 1970. In 63, 73, no, 73, 83, 93, Come 2003, on. 2013. Uh, look, all right? It's, it's, no one got it. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Why would they? Uh, that was Keyword Countdown. I can't connect. believe that I was... didn't get Love Actually. That's one of my favorite movies. Oh. I can't believe I. All right, let's bring, us, let's bring it back up with Dean Muscat's excellent Keyword Countdown jingle. That was lovely. Well done, well done, Dean. So, here's the thing. Yeah. You know, this is a video podcast, and yeah. we're obviously not listening to these. <laughs> yeah, I know. What's going to happen in the video when we're playing these? I did think this earlier. Uh, it these guys just think we're absolutely mad. We'll, we'll work something out. <laughs> Dale will work something out. <laughs> maybe maybe if it does, it, it'll be like an episode of Friends, where like yeah. it freezes, and then yeah. like some sort of lovely... Something, something can happen. We just turn it into a montage. Thanks, thanks Dale. <laughs> it could just be a freeze frame of you losing your shit during that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do some feedback then. What we got? Number oh, one, I'm I think, first, is I'm you. First. So this is uh, from Rob Maunder on the subject of review scores, which we talked about last week. Um, just want to challenge you on your chat about review scores in the latest podcast. Absolutely, Rob. Love hearing people challenge me. <laughs> As you say, reviewers can only offer personal opinions, but rather than a reviewer's personal opinion on how good a game is, I think that your readers are more interested in the reviewer's personal p- opinion on how good the community will think a game is. No. <laughs> to be more specific, I think that your review score should be a prediction of what the Metacritic score will be. When the Metacritic score stabilizes, the reviewer can see how good their prediction was and use the- Who cares? Why did anyone care about that? So. Okay, and uses the feedback into their own review process. When the reviewer makes a bad prediction, they can put their hands up and say, I got it wrong. The community will be much happier with the response as well. The community, that's, the community are idiots then. Right, so, Rob. Then, oh, that's ridiculous. Right. I- Metacritic <laughs> is designed as an average of review scores. Yeah. Because... It doesn't work. Because people like to know <laughs> yeah. what, you know, how it balances out afterwards. Metacritic is not the be-all and end-all. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. a review has to be a personal opinion. You have to... if, if Like we were saying last week, you have to take into account the that a critic is someone that you are placing your trust in yeah. to have the same opinions as you. Mm. So you need to learn which critics you trust and which ones you don't. Because some yeah. people share different views on stuff. Absolutely. I saw someone say, uh, like, comment on the video um, of last week's podcast where we were like, um, it's that one person's opinion. They go, yeah, but it's not, though. It's IGN's opinion. But it's like, well, no, well, they not. work for IGN, so it does become IGN's opinion. IGN's trust has been put in that person exactly. to have an opinion that represents the... the and you know, absolutely fine, because everyone who works here is amazing. 
mostly. Um, <laughs> except, except for people who spot Game of Thrones on Monday. Um, but that, cause, so yeah, it is IGN's opinion, but how else would you do it if we didn't get somebody else? Like, yeah. to do it blankly? But, Actually, I do think though there is something in there about the community part. Yeah, is interesting. Like to to understand. So, for instance, our Stellaris review, yeah, um, which was a six out of ten, which was wildly different to most people's reviews, which yeah. I think is actually a really good thing. Yeah, like, there should not be a consensus. Of course not, because there's many different sense. opinions. Yeah, um, our Stellaris review wasn't yeah. a community thing because the community of Stellaris loves that game because yeah, it's doing yeah, exactly yeah. what they want. Mm. Whereas for our reviewer. It didn't do what they wanted out of a strategy game. Yeah. Both of those things are totally valid. Yeah. I don't think there's necessarily a problem with having reviews that take into account the community or don't, because th- this is how things work. Yeah. What I think we should do on IGN, and I think this would be quite a cool thing, is to have our score, mm-hmm. and then I think we should have a score. That people who just go on IGN, just like Rob, yeah. like, can submit what their score is, we- and then we have an average. You know, we, you know, we have that. Do we? Oh, if you go on a game's page, we have user scores underneath our own do review we? scores. Wait, how do people but we don't have one, No, but I mean like but having one score. We don't have an average score. between yeah, the yeah. two. So I think we should average out all those and have one, so have a number there which is like our definitive review, but I also think we should have sort one of, from everyone. Sort of like yeah, Rotten Tomatoes well. where you've got the audience score and the critic score. Yeah, which Metacritic yeah. does as well, although yeah. it is prone to insane abuse. Yeah, um, but which this would inevitably also, happen yeah, to this. Inevitably, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like... I think, and that's a, actually a really well-reasoned response to us. And like, I don't want Rob to think that we are out of hand going, this is, you know, this is a bad opinion. Like, we disagree with you, Rob, but yeah. I do welcome people engaging with us on that. I, and I think there is, I think there's a better way to be found about this. I do genuinely think we should just drop review scores, personally. Like, I don't like them. I people think text is minds. more important. Yeah, yeah. and um, I, I, com- I completely agree. It's something that I said last week, that I think people place too much on the, the number. The actual number, mm. yeah. Which is... There we are. Still not being fixed, is there? Um, what have you got? What have I got? <laughs> hey guys, on last week's podcast, you talked about who would be the best character to have with you on a stag do. I would choose the crew of the Normandy from Mass Effect 3. It would be really. It would really be a reenactment of the party mission, but it would be cool to have drinks with Commander Shepard and his or her crew. What stag do wouldn't be complete with drunk aliens smashing the place up after one too many? Weird That's stag from do. Colin. Yeah. In Aldershot. I like it. I like yeah. that. I that's like a, that. That's a much better response than any of us. It's yeah. true. I think it makes way more Very sense. True. Did you play that Citadel mission in, in Mass Effect? No. no. So good. It is just having a drink with all your mates from I've, that game. I've never played a Mass Effect game. What are you doing? Yeah, I've never played a Mass Effect game. That's like top of my guilt list. I was going to say, is it something that you don't want to play or is it you just never got around to it? Just never got around to it. Oh, I'm, so I, it passed me by. Did you, um, did you, you play Dragon why. Age? No, don't like that. Because it's fair. maybe then it's just not your type. Because so, I played half of Mass Effect, mm. and but I love and adore Dragon Age, and yeah. I did not think it was as good as Dragon Age. I which I, I seem well, a lot it, of people would completely disagree with me and have disagreed with me. Mm, I but do. I <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. it anything like Knights of the Old Republic? Uh, yeah, but what? It's, well, it's drawn from the DNA of that <laughs> game. <laughs> so I'll play it then. Yeah. Like, Knights of the Old Republic is one of my favorite games, and like, yeah. The problem is that Mass Effect One is now so hilariously out of date. Is like, it? Yeah, like yeah. so the conversation stuff is really good, but the combat is unmitigated ass. Yeah. But like, do I need? Do I need to know what went on? Doesn't I mean, one of the games do. do a cool thing where it asks you a bunch of questions of like, what would you do in this situation? In, and then it creates your character based on the so questions in, you in do. So in three, it started with like a, a interactive graphic novel that Dark right. Horse Comics made, which is actually kind of cool, yeah. which lets you make major decisions from the past games. But because there are so many decisions right, in those, you yeah, can't yeah. get like the full But do you, get the, do you get the gist of the story? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like okay. it tells the story really well. Um, is Mass Effect 3 good? Yes, it's very good. Maybe I'll have a It's go. absolutely brilliant, in fact. And it has an amazing multiplayer that I bet no one plays anymore. But. What, uh, hmm. what review score would you give it? <laughs> I'd give it an uh, 11. <laughs> um, right. yeah. What's yours? This is a response to us talking about emojis, and more specifically me being confused by them, uh, new ones, because I didn't understand how that works. <laughs> this doesn't really explain it, but it's someone clearly more intelligent than me talking about this. <laughs> My favourite emoji is, of course, the roasted sweet potato, which I didn't know was an it's emoji. It's a roasted sweet potato! Yeah. What? 
Yeah. <laughs> as for open. Joe's surprise... Stop the podcast. <laughs> as, as for Joe's surprise at new emoji, the Unicode Emoji Subcommittee of the Unicode Consortium are the people who add new emoji to the Unicode standard. For example, the roasted sweet potato emoji was added in 2010 as part of Unicode 6.0. Text encoding is a weird subject. No, it David isn't. Megan's Nichols. I Nicholas. cannot see a roasted sweet potato. It what? looks a bit like that. Look, that's the that's the Unicode version. The hell is it's like that? a little chopped up bit of orange stuff. Wait, let me see. Mate, it's not there. That's, well, I, the closest I've got to that is cherries. That well, look, that just looks like a squiggle. Well, come on, guys. And actually, I don't know what that is. He, well, What's look, that? It's printed out. What's that? I don't know. Tamarind. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. Uh, I don't know what a tamarind is. Is it? Oh, it's not like an orange. There's like a. There's like fruit skewers. There's a bento box one. Yeah. Anyway, I don't have it's it. It's not on a, not on iPhone I yet. I don't have it. That's weird. That's Sorry. Annoying. Maybe if you read that email on your yeah. phone, it would show up. Ooh. The emoji that you want. Stop the podcast. <laughs> okay. Stop stopping the podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a really cool email. Um, oh, it doesn't say who he's from. Oh, it does. It does. Brandon Dennison. So basically, last week we were talking about the fact that Alicia was on in Harry Potter. Two Harry Potters. Ah. Two Harry Potters. We went and looked it up afterwards and we saw you looking uh, not frightened, a frightening <laughs> oh, thing. Oh, it's so funny as well because I'm guessing that you've always been quite a tall person. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. That because was. you're just about two foot taller <laughs> than the rest of the kids. <laughs> it's so funny. Because yeah. it's like, so why, why is that 30 year old lady <laughs> in the background of this? <laughs> It's like, has she been, has she been held back a bunch of years at Hogwarts? Just the special person <laughs> at Hogwarts. Just like holding your wand the wrong way around and she, <laughs> turning your hand into a frog. Oh, God. Which makes sense because everyone else is reacting in the scene and I'm standing there blankly. I'm just there. Oh, I need, yep. uh, basically, I need to find, like, we need to find like, a really high quality uh, HD. I'll, I'll just get it on DVD. I was going to say, the, the Blu rays exist. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. Get that. we'll do that. Um, they have a Blu ray. Um, okay, so this is from Brandon Dennison. We asked, has anyone ever done anything cool like that? He says, I did stunts for the terrible Martin Lawrence movie, Black Knight. Oh, that think, is... Does he go back in time? I think, he goes, I think he's a cop that goes back in yes, time. Yes, and he... And, yeah, and then because he's black, obviously, then everyone, like, is, goes has mad. problems with that. Oh, okay, right. I was brought in to do sword fighting on theatrical shit show that is Black Knight. <laughs> uh, he says I have plenty of stories, but... He just tells us one. Spoiler, none of them are pro-Martin Lawrence, as he is a monumental douchebag. <laughs> Imagine a douchebag wow. the size of a monument. However, Tom Wilkinson is a goddamn champion. I wouldn't have thought that Martin Lawrence is a douchebag. Don't you? He seems a bit, he seems a bit cruel to me. Does he? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought he's quite jolly. Who's Martin Lawrence? He's a comedian. Yeah, he was in Bad Boys. Yeah, he's not Will Smith in Bad Boys. Yeah. I've never seen Bad Boys. <gasps> this podcast has taught me that I have not oh, seen enough man. movies. Don't worry, Rory hasn't seen stuff either. And like, actually, we've been thinking about doing a thing with Rory where we make... Because Rory hasn't seen like Father Ted. Have you seen Father Ted? I have seen Father Ted. Rory hasn't seen Father Wait, Ted. Wait, Rory! Rory is Irish! I know. Um, it's like they're friends. Um, <laughs> he hasn't seen Father Ted. Uh, bottom. Loads of like... What's Bottom? Oh. This is amazing. It's all right. It's the clock. Uh, the clock makes <laughs> weird noises. Yeah, yeah, he loves bottom. Um, but it's a, it's a really awesome sitcom with Eddie Emerson and uh, Rick, Rick Mayo. Um, I actually visited the bench uh, on Saturday, yeah, because oh. I was in Hammersmith. Is it, somewhere so there. it's about a bench? Is it because loads of people, <laughs> loads of people put their bottoms on a bench? No, is this the in, in, the, uh, in the opening credits, they're sitting on a bench in Hammersmith and you can go to the bench and like it's basically become like a shrine to Rick Mayo. Yeah, it's now died. got like a little thing on it. Yes, yeah, there's loads of stuff on there. Yeah, it's really good. It's nice. Think, my girlfriend loves bottoms, so I took a photo of her on that. She I want Brandon time. to tell us more stories. Yeah, he man. Says, it's actually quite a short email. Yeah, yeah t- send us the stories in. Like, if you want, you know, we won't say, tell your name on the next one yeah. we'll just say it's from anonymous but then if they wanted to go back and find out it was you they really yeah. could but um, there we are if that's if it's sad that that's a uh, short one this is a really long one about being a film extra I'm going to have to cut out loads I'm sorry Rich Gibson. oh it's about extra because it is I have to admit when you were going through the long one because like I always think that if you're going to send an email to a podcast or something make it two or three sentences and it'll more or less definitely get read out that was massive I would delete that straight away but there are so good well bits done. well done here we go Rich Jepson. I wanted to write in as I've got a funny story about the time I was a film extra. After university, I spent a year working in Vancouver as an extra. This was loads of fun, and I wow. got to work on a bunch of different sets. The two biggest feature films I worked on were The Tooth Fairy with The Rock. <gasps> it's not about that. <laughs> I really want it to be. And Hot Tub Time Machine. What? Okay. What? Right. What? 
this hot tub time machine? What do you no, mean? Not really what is hot tub time machine? Is this is this another thing that I should have? Is this like a Schindler's nah, List no, it's not very style? Good. It's not Schindler's List. But it's <laughs> hot tub time machine and Schindler's List do not run in the same circles. But there was a big star on that, so uh, we're going to get into that now. Okay. I decided to take... I'm skipping loads. I decided to take a little detour through some camera and lighting equipment. As I emerged from the rigging, I realised I'd gone off track and walked straight into John Cusack's tent. <gasps> At this point, it's probably worth mentioning the costume I was, I was wearing. It looked like a cross between Doctor Who, Woody from Toy Story, and Clifford the Big, Big Red Dog. So in Hot Dog Time Machine, basically, it's about a group of friends who, in the 80s, like, they had it all sort of thing, and they had their whole lives ahead of them, and then all their lives turned to shit. Um, so they try and sort of reenact this amazing weekend that they have. They had when they were in the like in their teens. Mm -hmm. So they go to this cabin, get in a hot tub. Yeah. It's actually a time machine. Takes them back to when they were kids, and they're back in their kids' bodies. Uh... Yeah, so they get to sort of redo some stuff. Um, yeah, and John Cusack's in it. And so they wear stupid eighties clothes. They wear stupid eighties clothes. As I stumbled into John Cusack's view, he burst out laughing and almost fell out of his chair. I was a mixture of starstruck and annoyed that I'd be laughed at constantly for the past few hours. As well as this, I wanted to respond to his chuckling in a cool way, so as not to show how in astonishment I was at the prospect so of I speaking to John. So I got my penis John. out. I thought he'd like it. <laughs> well, I was at the pro how in astonishment I was at the prospect of speaking to John Cusack. So my response was... Have a fart. Don't laugh. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's amazing. I have no idea why I said it. Whether That's it was an attempt funny. at friendly banter or just a bit of retaliation for looking like a plonker. Immediately I winced at what I'd said and my stomach dropped at the heap of trouble I was about to be in. Oh. Fortunately, he only looked offended for a brief moment before continuing to laugh. Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Don't laugh, dickhead. Well done. <laughs> Don't laugh. Dickhead. That's fantastic. You dickhead. Oh, what a great story. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, if you've ever done any extra work or worked on any fun films and have funny stories, make sure you send them in. IGEN underscore UK feedback at IGEN.com. And send Gav loads of roasted sweet potato emojis. Yes, yes please. Him out. Thank you. I'm so confused. Yeah, mm. I want it. What is it? IGN, uh, IGN underscore UK feedback at IGEN.com. IGN yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your last bit of feedback? My last bit of feedback is from a guy called Scott Zeal. Cool. That's saying, a good name. It is a good name. Hey all, love the podcast as always. Alicia, sorry for the spelling. Although he spelt it right. A-L-Y-S-I-A, that's perfect. Smash. Yeah. That's good. Oh. I forget I was saying a lot. Yeah, you, you called me Alicia earlier, actually. I need it's hard to, to start. I need to get, actually, Chris. Alicia. Chris Tilly, the lovely Chris Tilly on He's our never team, said your name right. Never said, and it's got to the point now where I've been, I've been working. He calls me Alicia, and, and, and like, actually, every, like, I've worked here, like, three weeks, is it? And it's, it's, gone got too far the, now. it's got to the point where I actually feel like I can't correct him. What we'll do tonight, because we're going to go for drinks tonight, is what we, we'll, in, we'll have a situation, engineer situation, yeah. where Chris is there and you're there. Where we surround him and scream, Alessia, 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 <laughs> for I, hours. I, will, I won't be doing it because I constantly say your name wrong, mm. so maybe Joe can do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, come on. Okay, so, um, Alessia, sorry for the spelling. Oh, we'll be an awesome addition each week. This is great. Is this my mum? No, definitely Scott Zeal. <laughs> I have real issues with people leaving early. Being a huge fan of Lee Evans, each time I see him, he always ends his two-ish hour-long show with a passionate and funny song about his life or family oh, so on this the is, piano. Yeah, so, so this, this is, is in reference week. to last week when we were talking about how you skipped Left out Delaney, early, yeah. whether you can actually leave something early once you've paid for it. The moment people realise his jokes are all done and he's about to start singing, around 50% of the audience leave to get ahead of the traffic. Oh, that sucks. All because they just don't find it funny. Okay. Maybe right. it's because he's my favourite comedian and I guess people have a right to leave seeing as they paid for the ticket, but I just think it's rude because he puts just as much heart and effort into that as the rest of his show. Yeah. What do you think? That's the thing. That's I think that's different to what I did. Like I walked out because I wasn't having a good time yeah. after a good 35 minutes. But, but then I did... those people are walking out because they're not having a good time. No, those people are walking out because they want to get ahead of the traffic. So they know it's the end. Whereas I didn't wait okay. to the end. And then I'm not waiting to the end and like getting in people's way. Yeah. I, it was just me and my girlfriend leaving. And we left like really quietly. And I was also awesome like, leaving. Like, did you have that weird thing where you could tell that the comedian was noticing you and stumbled for a second? No, oh. no, 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 no. We were, it was, it was, at, um, it was at one of the places in South Bank that's like really, we were basically on a different level to Ah, him. okay. Um, like, Comedy, I'm on a com different com level. Comedy wise, I'm, I'm on a different level probably. Um, and see, and see, yeah. if it, I mean, if it was just literally you guys just leaving in that thing and yeah. no one else was, and I, I wouldn't feel as bad about no. it. But if literally half the audience were getting up and leaving, I would probably carry on sitting, even yeah. if it was yeah. so toe curlingly painful, I'd have to get an ambulance afterwards to have my toenail surgically, yeah. like, uncurled. But like, yeah, I don't know. It, 
it's just really awkward if everyone's leaving yeah, and you join yeah. them. But I, I always, I always think that like I, I never understand why people leave uh, sports. Oh no, it's events. crazy. It doesn't it's make any sense to me. Yeah. Um, because anything can happen. Yeah. My absolute favorite thing is people missing. Their absolutely, team winning yeah. when they've left because they're losing. And you're like, you deserve that. You <coughs> absolutely. Well, isn't the whole? Because like, I don't actually support a team. I say this. Mm. I'm drinking out of a massive Arsenal, Arsenal mug. Disgusting. Last week was um, Sports Direct. <laughs> sports Direct. It's because they're the two biggest mugs in the office. Yeah. They hold two cups of tea. But surely, if your team are losing, the whole point is you're a team supporter, right? So you're meant to stick it through to the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that is that the idea? Like I, sp- I support the- Fulham and Wales. You support so, Fulham. Yeah, so I've, I don't know you support Fulham. Yeah, so I've but like two teams that are not very good at football, <laughs> really. Even though Wales are going to win the Euros, so that's going to be amazing. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, so historically, have never been very good. Mm. Um, so I've been I've been in some horrible games. Yeah. Like I've been pasted left, right, and centre. But I always hang around to the end, no matter what, yeah, because you, you never know what's going to happen. And actually, a really funny thing. I happened so on the last weekend was the FA Cup final between Man United and Crystal Palace. Um, I'm not a huge fan of either team, but Chris does support Crystal Palace, and it's just nice to support the underdog. So I was with about 20 friends in, in a pub in Hammersmith. You went against Giggsy. Yeah, I did, feel, I did kind of feel bad for that, but <laughs> I did really want Crystal Palace to win because I wanted Chris to win as yeah. well. Like I really wanted that, and um, when Crystal Palace scored. This is spoilers for anyone who hasn't. You know, spoilers! But like, um, no. So all of my friends, we just because like we were all like Arsenal, Middlesbrough, Fulham, like mm-hmm. we were, like nobody was Man United or Crystal Palace basically. So we all decided to support Crystal Palace. We thought it'd be really fun. Mm-hmm. So when Crystal Palace scored, so ten minutes before the end, we went mental, <laughs> like absolutely ballistic. Like everyone's like on their feet. Like a couple of my friends were on the tables. <laughs> like a couple of girls I was with, like pretending to flash and stuff like that. We're like, we were doing it over the top because we were just like, it got to the thing where we, because we were just talking about how much we'd been supporting Crystal Palace for years and we just, all this stupid joke stuff. But we went so mad, we went so mental when they scored that a Man United supporter who was sitting the other side of the bar got up and left, like left the pub. This what? story started what? as don't walk out on your team and it's ended as you've annoyed someone, someone so, so much. much. But like, this is the thing, he walked out because it's 10 minutes toward the end and he's thinking his team has lost. No, so. he's not. He's no. walked out because there's <laughs> fucking <laughs> load of hooligans, hooligans on tables. Yeah, but anyway, he, he walked out so he missed Man United's goal. Oh, uh, so poor like, man. Yeah. I feel bad you for that. You ruined yeah. his day, Gav. But yeah, there we are. Well, that's that. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> that is the end of the podcast. If you want to get in touch with us, you can. IGN underscore UK feedback at IGN.com. Oh, should ooh. we plug oh, our yeah. exercise? Oh, Shit. yeah. Well um, so a bunch of us are running the British 10K on, I think it's the 10th of July? Mm-hmm. 10th or the 11th God, of July? It's much earlier than I thought yeah, it was. It is, it's, it's, no, it's not far away at I'm all. Die. Have um, you started no. training? Yep. Right. It's the 10th. Sunday the, Sunday the 10th of July. A bunch of us in London are running the. Um, British 10K, which is like a 10K all around London. Which, yeah, sorry, you go. So we're running it for special effect. We're an amazing mm-hmm. charity. Uh, it's actually from us lot. It's the three of us, mm-hmm. Krupa, mm-hmm. Yep. Dale, yep. Yep. and that's it. And right? Rory, I think, isn't it? No, Rory's, no, not, Rory's, doing Rory's it. not doing it. No, Rory's not doing it. Because he's mysteriously running. leaving the country. Yeah. No, 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 no. So he's, uh, yeah, so we're not doing it. But if you, if we're doing it for an amazing charity called Special Effect, you should like Google them and find out amazing stuff about them. I spent Saturday morning showing videos of how awesome they are to my girlfriend and crying. So, <laughs> oh. um, but if you want to sponsor this, you can go to justgiving.com forward slash IGN. In fact, we've already had at least one podcast listener donate. And yeah. Very, very, yeah, very really great. Kind. Kind. Oh. Oh, that's really awesome. Can't. Yeah. Also, your girlfriend donated 50 quid. I know. My girlfriend was fuming about it. <laughs> she's pretty, pretty flush. <laughs> yeah. Did you go back and say, well, uh... I, was, I was just going through on the train. I was like, oh, yeah, look, um, Joe's girlfriend, uh, Kate, uh, donated 50 quid. She went, she's having a fucking laugh. <laughs> £12.50 gift aid, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's more in gift aid than Tliss will probably sponsor me. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can. What were you going to say? Uh, it's gone. Oh, well. It's gone. Into the ether. Probably a lie. It was probably... It was um, probably more swear probably, words. Yeah. <laughs> probably. But if you, like, if you live in London, you should totally come down and uh, watch us try and oh struggle God, through please. it. If you're a it's St. John's Ambulance yeah. driver. We're, trying to, we're basically trying to raise about 200 quid each, so I think that's £1,800, yeah. 2000 I reckon if we do like 2500 That would be amazing. Sh- people, should have, sh- people should be able to uh, pick... <laughs> Um, like stretch goals. Like a fancy dress for us all to wear. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think. 
So, I, yeah. I'm going to struggle enough in, like, a shorts. I bumped into Harry in the kitchen the other day, who's one of our sales, sales guys. guys. running it, yeah. And he said, he was like, oh, yeah, I so, said, like, you should be able to, like, run it in maybe, like, 45, 50 minutes. What? And I was like... What? I'm walking off. I think I spat the tea that I, I would was like, I would drinking. Like, I would like to do it in under an hour. What? Yeah. I mean, you're actually really fit now. Which is not really fit, but I did fi- I did 5k on Monday morning mm-hmm. um, before I got Game of Thrones spot for me, and I did that in just under 30. <sighs> So, so if you double that, but then you're going to be tired, aren't you? So yeah. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see what I can do tomorrow morning. I mean, but then we are going out tonight. So this is the thing: is like you're good at this now. You're going to do well. Whereas I'm the not. Rest of that's us- the thing. Like 10k is going to be the furthest I've ever run. Like 5k, I think is maybe 8k is the furthest I've ever run. I'm okay. not sure. 1500 um. at school, being beaten <laughs> by my PE teacher for running behind me is the furthest I've ever run. Wait, what? Why was your PE teacher racing you? Because I was so recalcitrant. Did not. <laughs> <laughs> want to put one foot in front of the other <laughs> like Miss Keeley side unless you get me. I thought you were going to say like you were so tall that you were just faster than all the rest of them they were like oh it's not fair we can't have Alicia <laughs> running against the kids no like, that's it <laughs> like, <laughs> like she's not one <laughs> so, there's look at that theory you're all running as kids <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, just give it.com forward slash IGN and uh yeah, we'll see you next week. Love you we'll bye. See you guys. 